Hey traders, this is Luke Myers here. I wanted to make a video on the comparison of the 310 oscillator, the LBR 310 oscillator, with the traditional MACD. Um, and I wanted to also go over a, a, basically a lesson on day trading using this indicator um, on the tick charts. Now what you see before you is the ES, the S&P 500 uh, E-mini futures on 512 tick. Um, 512 tick is pretty much what I use. That's a Keltner channel up there with a 50 period exponential center line. This style of trading is popularized by both the E-mini Academy and the Day Trading Academy. Both uh, for those who don't know, both of the founders of both of those websites are uh, uh, basically friends back from high school or college, I believe it was college, um, and uh, they both kind of founded this style of trading or this system that's been popularized online. And I followed their work for quite a while and kind of used it as educational material for myself uh, to teach myself how to day trade. Um, and this style of trading would be considered swing trading. Anyway, I want to go over today's action. Um, and uh, for, a, for a really long time, I had a lot of trouble uh, with this system. Um, but once I start implementing the 310 oscillator, um, pretty much everything, all the problems that I had have gone away. Um, and the past couple of days, I've been putting up an MACD, a traditional one, and comparing them to the 310 oscillator to look at the signal differences. And today was a, a great example of the deficiency that is a traditional MACD with the 310 oscillator when you're day trading and you need very sharp, very fast, very accurate readings of momentum. Now the MACD can be great for other, other time frames and other systems, but when you're day trading tick charts with really f uh, kind of fast sharp movement and you need immediate um, readings of momentum, the 310 oscillator is probably going to be much better. Now we see here that uh, this was pre-market. Um, you see that price was unable to break through this area. We're making basically a double top. Um, and then you had this bearish reading in momentum. This was telling you that bam, the market's open. It's bearish, people are selling. You don't want to buy. I put this, this square here indicating that if you did buy this swing, because the, the trend pre-market was up, it looked very bullish. Uh, if you went by pre-market only, you would have thought, great, we're going higher on the day. But you can't because momentum is bearish. Now you look here at the MACD, and I put this square here to show that it did not give the same reading. Uh, based on this reading, you, you would have been confused. I mean, you could have gone by the previous reading here, and maybe said, you know, okay, well, it seems kind of bearish, I'm not going to go in. But it was much slower, uh, slow, smoother and slower, but the immediate momentum didn't give a, a very clear reading. Um, you can see this yellow line on the 310 oscillator. This was, uh, this corresponds roughly to the MACD, and it, that also provided a bearish um, divergent signal. Anyway, we broke down, there was a quick spike, a quick swing touch that you could have entered on um, with a, and then basically rode it two points to the uh, edge of the band. Um, and the, this is a 2.5 ATR on this Keltner channel. So when swing trading the 512, the 610 ticks on the S&P 500, two points is recommended. The only time um, that you might be able to deviate from that is if you really see a lot of big moves in the market. Um, but basically, if you're trading pivot to pivot, that's from swing trading off of the center line and then taking profits at the outer band of the channel here, typically that's going to be two points. Your stop is going to be about a point in a qu quarter. So you almost have a two to one risk reward ratio, not quite. But the, if you trade, trade it properly, the win rate can be quite high, above 70% um, quite a few times. Anyway, moving on, um, you would have seen this bearish momentum. Now, the, 
the basic, the general rule with momentum is, or I would say with this type of trading, is when you see this bearish momentum, you assume the trend is down and momentum is down until proven otherwise. So you continue trading pullbacks until either you have a trend, a trade fail, or you see a sign of end of trend. So we're gonna, I'm going to run through here and show you real quickly. Uh, you can see here we had this trade worked out. We move on, and of course I marked this momentum here um, because you can see it with a square because you can see it started to make a, a higher low, indicating bullish momentum. But the, the 310 LBR oscillator did not do that. If you followed the traditional MACD, it would have told you to stay out of both of these signals here. But both of these signals would have been two points, two points. Um, so if you were following the traditional MACD, you could have basically had one failed trade and then um, one winning trade. Or possibly a failed trade and two winning trades, depending if you got lucky or not. But you would have been unable to get these other two two-point moves. Because this would have been a two-pointer, two-pointer. You know, you'd already you could already be up between th have between three and four wins. Um, now the uh, MACD continues to make higher lows, indicating bullishness. But look, price just keeps going down. Then what happens? Suddenly, after you have three touches of the center line, um, the ticks slow down. Uh, you can see that the impulse is definitely slowed. And then already you can see right there uh, bullish divergence on the 310 oscillator. This is telling you to stay out. Now this was not this was not a two point move right here. That was about a point. And you can see it made a double bottom, a double bottom with bullish divergence. That is probably the cleanest reversal signal you're ever going to see in your life. This pattern right here, memorize it, dream about it, uh, take photos of it. Hang it around your office. Whatever you got to do, because this is as clear of a signal as you're going to get for a bottoming pattern. This is a regular uh, end of trend bullish divergence with a double bottom. Perfect. And you can see again, you had just a whole lot of slow kind of signals with the traditional MAC on these ticks. So that's again why I don't use this anymore. And why I think that the 310 LBR oscillator. The speed of it and the uh, the speed of it really gives a, a really good advantage. Now, again, we had the bullish uh, momentum signaling a new trend. So what do we wait for? We wait for a sign of the new trend. We have a break. We know we're on the right side of the market. We're happy we saw that break. Now we're ready to trade pullbacks again. We trade this first pullback. Boom, uh, another two points, and then. Here, actually, I think what had happened was we had almost got two points, but it was we had to get the two points really at this line, this upper uh, resistance area. It didn't quite go there. Pulled back again for potentially somebody to get back in, but I, I was already in here. Um, and then it eventually it breaks through, hits or hits our profit target here for that's for the two points. And eventually it breaks through for these guys who got in here, um, and then they took profits. And then. Um, I got in here, and what this pattern is, the ticks really started slowing down here. You could see there just wasn't a whole lot of buyers or sellers. The market was kind of slow, um, and by this time it was about eight o'clock in the morning. The first, really the, between six thirty and about eight thirty, is the real big impulse of the where a lot of the orders are hitting the market. Um, so I got in here. I had my stop right where this red line is. It kind of chopped around. That signals to me some type of micro uh, distribution or possibly accumulation depending on how, how it ends up breaking. Um, then I marked these little squares you can see here with potential areas that you could have got out or adjusted your stop. Um, if you were really risk adverse um, you could have just got out at this stop at this first square here when you saw price wasn't bouncing or wasn't working right. Um, if you pulled your stop in you could have got out here now, the, what ended up working out the, to be the best way to go was seeing that you were in this chop and pulling your profit target in to this uh, longer term uh, resistance line where this square is here. 
set your profit target for there, and then leave your stop unchanged. Now, if you did that, you would have you would have made like uh, half a point, and so you would have potentially either had uh, eighty five percent uh, win rate um, with uh, three, four, five wins, um, pretty cl maybe close a little bit closer to ninety percent, or you could have a hundred percent win rate if you avoided uh, this uh, cross here, and then the initial. Uh, signal at the start of the day. So e any, any way you look at it, it was a great day. Um, uh, at least maybe you know eight points available, eight to ten points depending on how you traded it. Um, well, I would say maybe six to ten points again depending on how you traded it, but a great day, lots of movement, lots of points, and uh, that just kind of goes over the advantages of using the LBR310 oscillator for momentum analysis and trend trading. Uh, this is Luke Myers signing out. Take care and happy trading.